the big night for Manchester United. They're back on track. Beating Real Betis 4-1. Arsenal win as well. Uh, sorry, they draw and West Ham win. So they are flying in the Europa Conference League, but not in the Premier League. What's going on there, West Ham fans? But let's go to Az, who's a Man United fan. All right, Az? Az? Hello, mate. How you doing? Yeah, good. Az, uh, big performance. Right, Az. You want to talk about the game? You was at the game. Um, what did you make of it? Yeah, just on the way home. The game was uh, really, really good. It was a really good uh, comeback, especially from the, uh, from the from the result we had at the weekend. You know, we, um, we, 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 I thought we would come back really well today. Um, but the reason I called was um, just to talk about the better fans, to be honest. Yeah, we heard there was a bit of trouble. There's um, obviously video mm. starting to circulate. We haven't seen anything on the I've TV bit, yet. I've seen bits. Um, yes. But just talk me through <laughs> the incident. It was a bit of a disgrace, right? Ab- absolutely dreadful. The police were standing around with them. There was loads of stewards around their fans. And they picked up, like, they, they started ripping up the seats. They started, uh, you know... Uh, a couple of guys took their belts off and tried to go into the um, the fans above us, the United fans above us, and and started whipping them with belts. Mm. It, it was absolutely crazy, and that only happened because the police were just standing about. Uh, when when they were throw, throughout the whole game, like, after we went two one up, they started throwing missiles, you know, um, uh, lighters. They started throwing like chair seats. They started throwing chewing gum, bottles, everything, the lot. Mm. And the police were just standing by watching. And then it escalated to a point where, you know, they jumped over. Like, one guy was literally in on the United side with a belt whipping some of our fans. Mm. Well, it doesn't... Does, it sounds, sounds a bit like a, a shocking incident. I'm sure uh, the UEFA are going to be getting involved in that and there's going to be heavy... Uh, Heavy fines and and, well, and they'll get to I the just bottom wonder, of it, but it's not good. I mean, look, we don't want to see that, do we? we no, do. no, no, no. Of course not. Of course not. I just wonder after what happened um, with the Liverpool fans, our UEFA have come out and not only have they apologised, they've admitted guilt, and they've also are going to refund all of those Liverpool fans, as far as I'm aware. I just wonder what their reaction will be. They were quick to blame. It's been it's it's known as the English disease, and to be fair, over the last 30, 40 years, we have deserved a huge amount of criticism because some of our travelling fans both national and with our clubs, have been appalling. Mm. We, we can't get away from that. I just wonder how quick they are to point the finger in the direction of them tonight. Let, let's let's wait and see. Yeah. As I really appreciate your, your call. Thanks for, for getting involved and, and, and you're getting home safe. Let's go to Dan, who's a Leeds fan. All right, Dan? All right, boys. How are we doing? Yeah, right, Dan. good, Dan. We've been talking about um, some delayed stories and, and some shockers because two games have got delayed over uh, the Champions League. But have you got one for us? Yeah, yeah, well, I think I can't remember the year exactly. I think I was about 16, 17, and uh, my mum had sadly just passed away, so my old man decided to take me and my brother to Magaluf, and uh, there was a problem with Steve. How old, sorry, how old were you then, Dan? How old were you? What, when I went to Magaluf, yeah. about 16, Jess. 15? You know, yeah, 16, yeah. mate, 16. yeah. 16, okay, okay, that, so, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. so there was a problem with the computer system that controlled all the flight radars and everything anyway. Went to Teesside Airport, two-hour delay, four, eight. Ended up being 12 hours, but England oh. were playing Germany, so the whole airport was absolutely rocking anyway. We'd get to Magaluf the next day about not been to bed for about 20 hours, you know, a few slide pints, only been 16 anyway. Fell asleep on the beach, didn't I? For about five hours on the first day, my, my shoulders oh, were like dear. a lobster cross <laughs> rhino, right? But the problem was without going into too much detail, that every time I sat down to have a little number two, when I tried to just give it a little help, you know what I mean? I, the pain was unbearable, so I was about five days before I could do anything, you know, in that, in that respect. But, yeah, good first good first trip at 16, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, you won't make that mistake again. Um, well, while we've got you on, Dan... Uh, you've got to talk to him about football. Now. Yeah, I'm going to go... All right, let's go back. It's a bit of a safer... Safer boundary. Um, it, it looks, it would appear, it's just breaking uh, on social media. X Man United coach Chris Armas has been axed by Leeds. Yevi you you Garcia um, has given a statement. He's left his post. Is, is that a big miss? Well, I don't know. What did he do, Jason? Do you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I don't know what you fans think. Uh, to be fair, Jason, I'm, I, we're a bit of a bit lost with it. I don't know really what's going on, to be fair. I'll probably get some pelters. I mean, 
I don't know really whether we whether if we go down if it's that bad of a thing. You know, I think the club's badly run. The season tickets are just going up by ten percent. Have they? Um, you know, some of the signings aren't great. One minute Victor Rota. You know, I mean, when you look at him crying the other week against Southampton, and then the next thing when we're beating teams in the last minute, he's sticking fingers up at them. I mean. It's, you know, it's just not been very well run. I don't know. I saw a bit of a jerky thing. I don't know whether you've seen it on social media where the old uh, Grandpa Simpson and Bart Simpson working at the strip club where Grandpa walks in and then walks straight out. It's a bit like Chris Armas, really, you know. He came in for a couple of weeks and went, obviously, it was Jesse Marsh's man. Um, And, yeah... It was, you know, I don't know with it really all at the minute, really. I mean, I like Grazia, you know, and I think he's done some half decent things in the short time he's been here, but I don't know. We're a bit so a, here's his statement. It says he's not part of my staff, he's not here. It's something the club may can maybe explain better. So he's passing it on to the back of the club. Uh, we don't know. Once we find out more, we'll let you know here at TalkSport. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, no. All right, then. Take care, mate. Thanks for, that, thanks for that story. Honestly, what the avenues you you end up going down? What do you mean? You, you just you go off on. What do you mean? Nothing to do with me. That <laughs> I, had, I had absolutely zero impact on that phone call. Right? I put it this way: I've never done that though. <laughs> oh, this show. Let's go to Matthews, a Man United fan. All right, Matt. All right, Matt. All right, Jens. How you doing? Yeah, yeah good, good Matt. Matty. Good. Look, you set the game. Atmosphere better than obviously the um... Liverpool uh, shocker, and it was a, and it was a result that you needed. It, I'm not going to lie, it was a bit of a tense atmosphere, um, as you'd expect, after the weekend. Uh, it's, a t- it's a typical kind of United performance, a bit of a slow first half, and then second half, we just kind of go up, go up the gears, and mm. we kind of get the result we needed. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, once you got that second goal, you were in control. That It never felt like that first half. Even though you took the lead, I never felt that you were in control of the game. Felt that, that Real Betis... Could at some stage, and as they, as it was proved, they did. May even have gotten to take the lead. Once you got that second goal, I felt that the game changed. I felt that you then got the go- game over the scruff of the neck, dominating possession, and in the end, ruthless, far more ruthless in front of goal um, than, than they certainly were first half. And it's amazing how you, you could, the game could be so even, or maybe shade it to the, the opposition in one half. Yet the game comes away four one. Yeah, it's because it's the, it's the ruthlessness of the finishing. You would you would not have to the end of end of the first half. No, Their chance at the end as well was yeah. in the false. No, you're right. You're, you're right. right. I saw it and thought, you know what? They're a Spanish team, they love possession and you yeah. can tell it and we're getting played off the park. Yeah. Yeah. Second half, like you say, just yeah. put ball in back in net when it mattered and it just changed the whole entire thing. Yeah. And also dominating the ball. Much, much, much better in possession. Didn't allow Betis to impose their game. Over the 90 minutes, the best side won by somebody. Yeah. So it could have been different. You know, that's what yeah. goals change games. Uh, Matty, you, you was at the game. Did you see the Real Betis fans and the, the disruption that they caused? Yeah, about 70th minute. They started trying to jump over the uh, fence to get into the home end. Uh, obviously, all the stewards got it under, under control and stuff, but... A bit, a, bit, a bit of madness, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm not good, but don't want to see that. Matthew, I really appreciate your call. Thanks for phoning in. The Sports Bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy. Monday to Thursday nights from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.